I want to do a really quick video about the Central American nation of Honduras. And it's in the news now because it has changed its recognition from the Republic of China to the People's Republic of China. Uh, the Western media is reporting it this way. This is from CNN and the rest of the Western media is covering it in a very similar and dishonest way. It says Honduras establishes diplomatic ties with China, severs them with Taiwan. And down here it says Honduras has formally established diplomatic ties with China and severed them with Taiwan, ending a decades long relationship and dealing a blow to the self-ruled island democracy in its struggle for recognition. The government of the Republic of Honduras recognizes the existence of one China in the world and that the government of the People's Republic of China represents China as a whole. Its Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement on Saturday local time. Taiwan is an inalienable part of Chinese territory and as of today the government of Honduras has informed Taiwan about the rupture of diplomatic relations it added china which sees taiwan as part of its territory despite never having ruled it refuses to maintain diplomatic ties with any country that recognizes taiwan and they're pretending as if just beijing imagines that taiwan is an island province of china's that is actually not true uh, the entire world recognizes Taiwan as a province of China, including Honduras previous to this decision. The only dispute that there is, the only choice that nations have in this matter is whether they recognize the Republic of China on the island province of Taiwan or the People's Republic of China in Beijing. And it's very obvious that the People's Republic of China in Beijing is the sole legitimate government of all of China, including Taiwan. And if you look at the, the constitution of the Republic of China based on the island province of Taiwan, even in their own constitution, it considers Taiwan as just one province of the rest of China. And they claim that they themselves are the sole legitimate government of all of China. And to prove this, all you have to do is go to say the US Department of State's official website, their page titled US Relations with Taiwan. And if you come down here, it says the United States approach to Taiwan has remained consistent across decades and administrations. The United States has a long standing one China policy, which is guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three US China joint communiques, and the six assurances. Well, this Taiwan Relations Act has nothing to do with US. Chinese relations because it's a unilateral uh, internal law passed within the US it has nothing to do with any anything to do with China at all. We oppose any unilateral changes to the status quo from either side. That is not Washington's choice to make. We do not support Taiwan independence. And right there should be a period because they don't they don't recognize Taiwan's independence. It has no independence. It's not an independent country. It is part of one China and the United States officially recognizes the People's Republic of China in Beijing, not the Republic of China. That is an unofficial ties that they have as part of their double dealing, like what they do with, with all other nations. This is the double dealing they are doing with China. And this is at the very root of US-Chinese tensions. The US officially recognizes Taiwan as part of China and the People's Republic of China as the official and sole legitimate government of all of China, but at the same time, they are engineering separatism on the island province of Taiwan in contravention of international law. And speaking of international law, uh, the United Nations itself considers Taiwan as part of China and recognizes only the People's Republic of China in Beijing. So this is the, the UN, United Nations, Restoration of the Lawful Rights of the People's Republic of China in the United Nations. This is 1972. And this is the resolution that, that settled this, this question decades ago, decades ago. Uh, so this is UN Resolution 
2758, Restoration of the Lawful Rights of the People's Republic of China and the United Nations. And it says, recalling the principles of the Charter of the United Nations, considering that the restoration of the lawful rights of the People's Republic of China is essential both for the protection of the Charter of the United Nations and for the cause that the United Nations must serve under the Charter, recognizing that the representatives of the government of the People's Republic of China are the only lawful representatives of China to the United Nations, and that the People's Republic of China is one of the five permanent members of the Security Council, uh, decides to restore all of its rights to the People's Republic of China and to recognize the representatives of the government as the only legitimate representatives of China to the United Nations, and to expel forthwith the representatives of Chiang Kai-shek from the place which they unlawfully occupy at the United Nations and in all organizations related to it. And Chiang Kai-shek was at the time the leader of the Republic of China and that was the UN rejecting the, the concept and the existence of the Republic of China as, as anything except uh, a side that lost the Chinese Civil War, fled to the island province of Taiwan and now is no longer recognized by the United Nations as anything except as part of China. And people will say, well, that's 1972 times change. Well, more recently, we have this. This is also from the UN. Final clauses of the multilateral treaties handbook. This is from 2003. And if you go through the document, you will see a part that says regarding the Taiwan province of China, the secretary general follows the General Assembly's guidance incorporated in Resolution 2758 of the General Assembly of 25 October 1971 on the restoration of the lawful rights of the People's Republic of China and the United Nations. The General Assembly decided to recognize the representatives of the government of the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate representatives of China to the United Nations. Hence, instruments received from the Taiwan province of China will not be accepted by the Secretary General in his capacity. Case closed. Taiwan is part of China. It always has been. It is right now. And the, the only question that is being created here, the only reason this remains a viable debate is because the United States is double dealing with Beijing uh, while engineering separatism on the island province of Taiwan. And because, let's go back to uh, CNN here because CNN and everyone else across the Western media consistently and very deliberately lie about the status of Taiwan, all to advance U.S. foreign policy objectives, which is to encircle and contain China, and they want to use Taiwan as an unsinkable aircraft carrier. This is why they're engineering separatism there. One more point to make here is that the concept of Taiwan somehow being an independent country, which again, even the Republic of China on Taiwan is, is not saying, not yet, uh, the concept of an independent Taiwan would mean the destruction, the cratering of the island, uh, the island's economy that would crater and collapse and uh, people would be thrown into destitution. And why is that? Because it is part of China. It's integrated into China's economy. Half of its exports go to the rest of China. When you compare, uh, when you combine mainland China and Hong Kong, which is also part of China, when you compare, when you combine it together, it's half. Half of Taiwan's exports go to the rest of China, and its largest source of imports comes from the rest of China. And a lot of these are critical inputs for Taiwan's semiconductor and electrical component industries, which are their two biggest industries. So cutting themselves off from the rest of China by declaring themselves independent would completely destroy their economy. It would come into existence as a failed state and it would remain a failed state. And all that it would be used for after that is to serve as uh, a location for US military facilities used to menace China right off its coast and within what used to be part of its territory. That's what this is all about. This is why China is reacting the way that it is. Its sovereignty is being blatantly and constantly violated by the United States over this particular issue. And Honduras is making the right decision because China will not deal with you as a nation diplomatically if you refuse to recognize the People's Republic of China as the sole legitimate government of all of China. Why would they, if you're recognizing the Republic of China on the island of Taiwan, why would 
the People's Republic of China ever do business with you. That, that wouldn't make any sense at all. It's very reasonable. And Honduras was doing this not because it made any sense, but because uh, the previous government was influenced by the United States to do so. And, and interestingly, and as I just showed you, the United States does recognize the People's Republic of China in Beijing because it wants to do business with the rest of China. And it places these restrictions on these smaller countries that it could coerce into recognizing the Republic of China instead. So this is Honduras slipping out from under the shadow of U.S. hegemony and coercion and making a decision that will serve the best interests of Honduras, uh, the nation, the people, and its economy and its future and its prosperity. That leaves a total of 12 countries in the entire world that recognize the Republic of China as the sole legitimate government of China instead of the People's Republic of China in Beijing. And if you go to uh, here, uh, this is worldpopulationreview.com, countries that recognize Taiwan. Again, it's not recognizing Taiwan, it's recognizing the Republic of China. It even clarifies that down here, officially named the Republic of China. And you can see here listed 13 nations, but Honduras has, has changed their position on this, so now it is only 12 nations. It says down here, the United States maintained Taiwan's recognition for 30 years after the Chinese Civil War, but switched in 1979. And yet they're going to coerce other nations to recognize the Republic of China, because that's how the United States does business. People have to understand all of this as they watch US-Chinese tensions grow. Everything else uh, is what the U.S. always does uh, from the beginning of the 21st century onward, how they manufacture lies, dehumanize their enemy and uh, push everyone in the direction towards war. Uh, but when you look at the center of the issue, you see a, a giant lie or something incredibly indefensible or both. And that's what is at the center of U.S. Chinese tensions, the U.S. violating Chinese sovereignty within China's own internationally recognized territory. It is intolerable. The U.S. would never tolerate it. Neither should China. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Uh, check the video description below for all the other places you can find and follow my work. All of the links to everything that I just referenced is also there in the video description below as are ways you can help support my work. I don't monetize my YouTube channel. I never will. If you see an ad pop up, feel free to block it or skip it because it's not helping me out at all. And if you do want to support my work, if you do want to help out, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also through Patreon. And to everyone who has been helping out, whether it's a one-time donation, uh, donations every month, or even if you're just sharing my work with others and getting the word out to more people, I greatly appreciate all of that. That's what makes this work possible. Uh, and so again, thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.